So hopefully by this point you have watched all the podcasts and you're just looking for a few extra example problems related to empirical molecular formulas. Now, I'm not going to give more example problems on mole and gram conversions because pretty much once you've seen one, you've seen them all. There are some nuances to some empirical molecular formulas, so this is a good place to, to look at for those. Now, my expectation is that you're not going to watch this podcast 100% through without stopping. I expect you to basically look at this problem, hit pause right now, and then just fast forward to see what the final answer is to see how to make sure that your work and my work match up. Okay? So this is going to be a long podcast because I have a lot of talking to do, but like I said, I don't expect you to watch the whole thing. So it says, determine the empirical form of the compound with the following composition, 21.7% carbon, 9.6% oxygen, and 68.7% fluorine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume that those are all grams. So I'm going to say this is 21.7 grams of carbon, 9.6 grams of oxygen, and 68.7 grams of fluorine. I'm going to set up my mole conversion for each of them could because when in doubt, mole it out. And I'm not going to touch my calculator because touching the calculator takes more time. Now remember, round to two places past the decimal on the periodic table. Um, oxygen is 15.997, 15.99. 9, I'm sorry, 15.999, so therefore that rounds to 16. Fluorine is 18.998, so that rounds to 19. That's why I use those two numbers. Okay, so now I finally go to my calculator. And I say, okay, Mr. Calculator, show me some numbers. So I got 21.7 divided by 12.01 is 1 point, oh, okay, so Let's punch them all in before I start rattling off numbers here. 9.6 divided by 16. And 68.7. It does not like this decimal. Divided by 19. Okay, hopefully you're going to help me remember these numbers. Uh, 1.806.6 and 3.62. Point six and three point six two mole mole mole. Now remember, this is not math class. These numbers actually have phys is actually they're actually matter. So they do matter matter like they're matter as in physical things in the universe. So now again, I divide by the smallest one, which is point six. And the numbers here are pretty easy to work with. So obviously, it's this is equal to three. This is equal to 1, and this one's equal to 6, because 18 divided by 6 is 3, 36 divided by 6 is 6. So this formula is C3OF6. Just like that. Okay. So, again, empirical formula, here are my numbers. Now, I have 40 grams of carbon. Again, it doesn't matter what they give me. The process is still the same. Convert to moles first. 6.7 grams of hydrogen. One mole of hydrogen equals 1.01 grams. 53.3 grams of oxygen. One mole of oxygen is 16 grams. la di la di da Okay, so go back to my calculator. Punch it all in at the same time. 40.0 divided by 12.01 is 3.33. 6.7 divided by 1.01. 0, 0. Thank you. 1 is 6.63. And 53.3 divided by 16 is 3.33. So I get 3.33, 6, uh, 0.63, and 3.33. So I divide them all. Now, there's a little bit of a um, margin of error in all of this, because the problem is 
masses don't come out to nice round numbers for textbooks. And if you notice, all the textbook problems that I'm showing you are always rounded to one place past the decimal, when really they should probably be rounded to two or three places past the decimal. decimal. So obviously, this one comes out to one, and this one comes out to one. But this isn't quite one, two. It's ever so slightly short of two. You can round up if it's really, really close, which is what I'm going to do here. So this comes out to C. H2O. You'll also start to notice that these nut formulas kind of look like they make sense. Um, if you get something and it's like C3H47O9N11, you're like, uh, what? How is that possible? So you start to recognize that things start to like look like they make sense. The numbers down below like are common sense numbers. So that's what you want to pay attention to. OK, again. Lather, rinse, repeat. Keep doing this until you get it right. So let's go for this one. Now, in this one, they were nice enough to give me the actual grams already. It doesn't change the problem. I still, first thing, mole it out. But instead of having to convert from percentages, I just write it right into the mole conversion. 16 grams. OK. So I take 11.66 divided by 55.85. And I get, and I take 5.01 and I divide by 16. And I get that. So it's 0 0.209 and 209 moles and 0.313 moles. And I have a bad feeling this is not going to come out. And I have a bad feeling this is not going to come out nice and even. OK, so obviously that one's 1, but this one is definitely not 1. So let's open up our calculator, and let's try this. So I take 0 0.31, actually, I'm going to do it this way, answer divided by 0.2. 209 and I get 1.5. Oh. That's not good. Now what do I do? It's supposed to be the simplest whole number ratio and 1.5 is certainly not a whole number. Well, let me think about this for a second. What could I do with 1.5? Let's imagine I'm in math class for a second. I know. I don't like math class either. Okay, so no, nothing about those math. Don't worry, math teachers. We love you. You do fun stuff. Because without you, how could I do these empirical formula problems? So let's think about this for a second. Let's not look at 1.5 as 1.5. Let's look at it as 3 halves. Because I remember from math class, my teacher telling me that if I want to get rid of an improper fraction, that I need to multiply by the denominator in the fraction. And if I multiply by the denominator here, I get 3. But you know what? If I do it to 1, I wonder if I have to do it to all of them. You know what? I had better do it to all of them. So if I multiply, multiply 1 by 2, I'm at to multiply them both by 2. Hey, what do you know? I got two whole numbers here. And I get a formula of Fe2O3, which I know is iron 3 oxide. And bam, I know that I did this problem correctly. I know, I was kind of silly in that problem. but. Uh, that's what happens when you do, do lots and lots of podcasts. So let's think about this again. If I end up with a situation where my number comes out to be a fraction, all I'm going to do is multiply by the denominator in the fraction, and I'm going to do that to everything all the way through. And it should give me whole number ratios when I'm all done. And that's how I solve this problem. OK, now, this problem is going to combine everything into one. So I have to do both an empirical formula and the molecular formula at the same time. OK, so let's start by finding the empirical formula, because I know that from that previous podcast, I can't solve for molecular formula unless I have an empirical formula first. So I'm going to do all it now. There's a lot of conversions that I have to do in here. So give me a second. Let me set these all up for you. So one. And I've got this auction, 2, 16, and 7.64 grams of nitrogen. 
Hoo-wee, this is a lot of stuff to type. Okay, so now, got to go to my calculator again. <clears throat> 59 divided by 12.01. 7.16 divided by 1.01. 26.2 divided by 16. And 7.64, oops, Miss the decimal. Divided by fourteen point. Z it does not like this decimal. Wow, that's a lot of numbers to remember. Okay, so you're going to help me. I've got pot point five four five one point six four. 7.09. Notice that in every one of these, I've always rounded to two places past the decimal. That's good rule of thumb when it comes to empirical formulas. Just round to two places past the decimal when you're solving for moles. Two, at least two places past the decimal. So I've got 0.545 moles. Clearly, that's my smallest. 1.64 moles. OK, you got to yell at the last two for me. 7.09, thank you. And 4.91. Thank you for writing those down while you were doing them. OK. I'm going to divide by my smallest one. And I can see, oops, this is supposed to be 0.545. Sorry. Obviously, that one's 1. This one is 3. Um, but these other two I can't do off the top of my head. So let's actually go back to my calculator and say, okay, so 7.09, oops, okay, 7.09, 0, 9, thank you, calculator, divided by point. Five four five is thirteen. Okay, that works. That's a nice whole number. And then four point nine nine one divided by point five four five is nine. Sweet. So I get nine thirteen. So my formula is C nine H thirteen O three N. That is my empirical formula. Now, the question also says molecular formula. So MW stands for molecular weight, and the molecular weight is 183 grams per mole. So what I have to do is I have to add up all the weights from the periodic table. So I add up nine carbons, 13 hydrogens, three oxygens, one nitrogen. Parentheses will be my friend. Nine times 12.01 plus plus i said plus plus 13 times 1.01 1 .01 plus 3 times 16 plus I can just do plus 14.01 is 183.23. Okay, so 183 divided by 183 is 1. So therefore, this C9H13O3N is also my molecular formula. And that's how I solve both empirical and molecular formula problems, all in one fell swoop. So hopefully that has covered any problems that you may have related to empirical and molecular formulas.